be the students of Ohala, North Dakota, will tell you about what is being done to conserve our rich biodiversity in the Pemina Gorge. In 1986, a survey was done on the natural diversity in the Pemina Gorge by the North Dakota Park and Recreation. The Pemina Gorge consists of about 12,500 acres of land and is one of the largest woodlands in the state. The walls of the Pemina Gorge consist of Cretaceous shale deposits that were left here about 80 to 100 million years ago. The walls provide cool, shaded, and moist conditions which serve as a good habitat. The first written accounts of the Pemina Gorge were recorded by Captain Alexander Henry of the Northwest Fur Company in the early 1800s. The early settlers and traders talked of high wild diversity which included deer, elk, beaver, bison, and bears. The Pemina Gorge has the highest number of rare species in North Dakota. This includes 21 animal species and 30 plant species. Of these species, eight occur nowhere else in the state. It is one of the two areas for moose to be found and it contains the only naturally occurring herd of elk in the state. Our highest population of wild animals is deer. We are hoping in the future we can manage this high number of deer. Wahala is a beautiful place and has a very unique terrain that makes it a heaven for deer. Walsh and Pemina County have had a great explosion in the deer population so they had to open up an early and extra hunting season just to cut the numbers down. Licenses have been issued for does or female deer only in these two counties in North Dakota. There is also a youth hunting season. Both season runs from mid-September to the end of December. Around in Wahala we consider deer season a holiday. It is a great time for families to come together and partake in a tradition that has been going on for over many years. When the deer season comes around the smaller communities financially benefit. Wahala does great because we have the Pemina Gorge and a lot of people have heard about the deer we have around here. Wahala is one of these small communities that makes a lot of money during hunting season, especially in our cafes, grocery stores, motels, and gas stations. Most people believe that many of us hunt just for fun and recreation, but as much as it is, there's also another reason for it. That is to keep the problems of overpopulation and concentration to a low minimum. These problems of overpopulation of deer include diseases and parasites, deer depredation, deer vehicle collisions, and other urban deer problems. The first problem, diseases and parasites, causes serious losses of deer. White-tailed deer are now faced with two important diseases, chronic wasting disease and tuberculosis. Most of the die-offs are unpredictable and can occur at any time. Hunters have been active in tracking chronic wasting disease by donating the brains of harvested deer for testing. Deer depredation, a loss of predators, has contributed to the problem of diseases and overpopulation. This is a con continuous chronic management problem that is most seen during severe winters. This is due to the wintering wildlife feeding policies and baiting to help the deer survive in the harsh winter conditions, but it encourages deer to congregate in smaller areas which speeds up the spread of diseases among them. Another problem with the overpopulation of white-tailed deer is deer vehicle collisions. Deer crashes typically occur around dawn and dusk when the deer are most active. During rutting and fawning seasons, the number of crashes increases. In the last decade, the number of crashes has increased by 89.4% according to North Dakota Crash Summary 2007. The month of November has the highest deer crash rate per day at 30.7 crashes statewide. There were a total of 921 crashes in November 2007 alone. This continues to be the bigger problem with the overpopulation of deer in the northeastern part of North Dakota. With such a high number of deer in an area, many problems can occur. The North Dakota Game and Fish Department has taken precautions to help prevent overpopulation and spread of disease through the white-tailed deer population. One step that has been taken is the abandoned farmstead project. The goal of this project is not to increase deer population, but to disperse it. The strategy is to enhance woody vegetation in abandoned farmsteads. This will hopefully alleviate large concentrations of white-tailed deer in small areas. Another action taken is the opening of plots, or private land open to sportsmen. In order to harvest more deer, the amount of posted land must be reduced and or more hunters have to be given permission by posted landowners to hunt on their land. In doing so, hunters can access private land containing larger numbers of deer. In Pemina County, we don't have to worry about losing future hunters because here we make hunting what we like to call it a family tradition. But unfortunately, areas in our state and other states aren't as lucky. To protect and conserve biodiversity in the Pemina Gorge, we plan to maintain our deer population to a manageable and successful number. Thank you.